is MS all in our heads or is it in our guts too? MS is a multifactorial disease. A what? It's a disease that has many factors that contribute to it. There is a genetic component, there's an environmental component, and there's a viral infection component. It's also linked to vitamin D levels, smoking, diet and obesity, and geography. There are many things that can contribute to it. More recently, there's been increasing interest in research into our guts and how our gut microbiome plays a role. Gut dysbiosis has been linked to neurodegenerative diseases like MS. I'm kind of excited about this because there are things that we can do every day to improve our gut health. More on that later. In April of this year, a new study was published by PINAS, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, one of the most cited and comprehensive scientific journals. The study was entitled Multiple Sclerosis and the Gut Microbiota, Lactospiricae from the Ilium of Twins Trigger MS-Like Disease in Germ-Free Transgenic Mice, an unbiased functional study. It showed some really interesting results. They found two specific strains of bacteria in our guts that are more common in people with MS. These are part of the Lactospiricae family of bacteria. In the study, they looked at the gut microbiomes of 81 pairs of identical twins where one twin had MS and the other did not. Using identical twins helped to rule out or minimize the genetic and environmental factors of developing MS. They then took the microbes from the twins and introduced them into the mice that had been engineered to be more susceptible to an MS-like disease. When they analyzed the mice that got sick, they were able to see which bacteria were most likely to be associated with developing MS. The researchers said, together with our functional studies, this supports our conclusion that these bacteria may play a crucial role as environmental triggering factors of human multiple sclerosis, although further studies will be required to extend our present findings. We live in amazing times. There's so much being revealed about the possible causes of MS and how we can better manage it with DMTs and how much diet and lifestyle changes can help us with our symptoms and possibly reduce progression. Now, there are trillions of bacteria in our gut microbiomes and they have only done tests on mice models, so there's still a lot of work to be done, but this is exciting nonetheless. They did not give any specific recommendations on how we can support a healthy gut microbiome and minimize the risk from these two particular strains, but there are things that we can do to help our guts be healthy. I highly recommend the book Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Bolsowitz. In it, he goes over how gut health is key to our health and how having a healthy gut can tame the inflammation that causes a whole host of diseases. He shares scientifically proven ways to fuel our guts with dietary fiber from an abundant variety of colorful plants. I'll link it below if you would like to check it out. Our gut microbiome supports our immune function and our bodily functions. It educates our immune system and trains it to distinguish between harmful pathogens and friendly microbes. And those friendly microbes can protect our gut barrier and help prevent leaky gut. Our guts also communicate with our brains. The gut-brain axis helps to control our brain and our emotions. It can impact our mood, stress, and cognition. There are a lot of things that we can do to help our guts be as healthy as possible. What we eat, how we sleep, and our stress levels can all influence our microbiome. But let's start with diet. Eating a diet that has a large diversity of plants is key to supporting our microbiome. Our gut microbes love fiber and resistant starches that are found in legumes, whole grains, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds. One of the best ways to support our gut microbiome is to eat a lot of different plants. The Microseta Initiative, which is one of the largest microbiome research studies, recommends at least 30 different kinds of plants in a week to support a higher microbial diversity. I will put a link below to their page that can help you to increase your diversity of plants each week. This greater diversity of microbes helps our guts to produce more health-producing compounds like short-chain fatty acids and are more protective to our overall health. But, there's always a but, isn't there? It is recommended to increase our diversity slowly because if we do it too fast, it can cause inflammation. Our guts and microbes need time to adjust. 
If you're eating a low number of different kinds of plants each week, ramp up slowly over weeks or months to give your guts time to adjust. An easy way to start to increase our diversity is to buy frozen mixed fruits or vegetables. They're picked at the peak of ripeness and flash frozen, so they're really nutrient dense. It's a great way to add a lot of diversity without much food waste. Another tip is to eat leftover pasta, rice, and potatoes. When these foods are cooked and then cooled, the carbohydrates are then converted into resistant starches. This means less glucose spikes for us and more food for our microbes. Another bonus of eating more plants is that they're loaded with polyphenols that promote beneficial bacteria and prevent inflammation. And MS is an inflammatory disease. Eating fermented foods is another great way to feed our gut microbiome. They're loaded with live microbes. Examples of fermented foods are sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, tempeh, yogurts with live cultures, which can be plant-based, kombucha, fermented sourdough, or other fermented vegetables. Researchers found that fermented products may help to lower inflammation and people who ate or drank several servings of fermented foods every day for 10 weeks significantly lowered markers of inflammation in the body. Be careful when choosing your fermented foods, though. Not all foods that are labeled fermented have live microbes. Some are pasteurized, and the pasteurization kills the live microbes. Look for foods that are labeled that they contain live and active cultures. Other ways to support a healthy microbiome is through lifestyle choices, like exercise, both cardio and strength training. Bonus points if you exercise outside, exposing yourself to environmental microbes. Sleep is the next way we can support our microbiome. Just a few days of poor sleep can negatively affect our guts. Be sure to have good sleep hygiene habits, including seven to nine hours of time in bed each night, not using screens too close to bedtime, and getting natural daylight in our eyes every morning. Managing stress is also important to keeping our guts happy. When we're stressed, it can lead to leaky gut and increase our inflammation. Some ways to manage stress are mindfulness practices, breathing exercises, meditation, volunteering, and spending time in nature. Okay, now let's look at what can be harming our guts. Overuse of antibiotics. When I was a kid, it seemed like we always had a bottle of pink antibiotics in the refrigerator. I often wonder if this is connected to me developing MS. Yes, antibiotics are important when needed, but as a society, we're really overusing them. And not just on us, but on cows and chickens and pigs too. Living in sterile environments can contribute to less microbe diversity too. Playing in the dirt and having pets is good for us. And next is ultra-processed foods. These foods are lower in fiber and full of ingredients that can harm our microbiome, like emulsifiers and preservatives and other chemicals. They do nothing to feed our guts what they need. And when we eat ultra-processed foods, we crowd out healthy foods. Luckily, our gut microbiome is dynamic and highly responsive. In a nutshell, if we increase our fiber intake and diversity of fiber, exercise regularly, and get good sleep, we're helping our microbiome to be healthy. The question of the day is, there's some research about gut microbiota and muscle mass. Would you be interested in a video like this? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy content like this, please do me the favor of hitting the like button and subscribing. This really helps the channel. And if you're interested in learning more about diet and MS, watch this video next. And until next time, be well.